verses. Brothers read Proverbs 29, 18. Brothers. You Really began to work out his economy when he created man. 
Now comes this man, Noah. I call the Noah to your life. Say, it's going to rain for 40 days and 40 nights. Yep, all this. The entire earth will be flooded. So we've got to build this immense ark. And that ark will be our salvation. You know the story. People mocked him. This, this guy is crazy. Eventually, a very small number saw the vision. Now so you buy a I see it. God is going to judge. All of them. But he made a way for us to be saved. I'm going with Noah. Amen. Small number. If you were alive at the time of Moses, Moses received a vision of God's tabernacle. And nothing like that ever had existed on the earth. Moses received it in a vision. Directly from God. Nobody else. One person. Just like Noah. Noah was the only one who received it directly. Everybody else received it through Noah. Moses was the only one who received the revelation of God's building directly from God. Everybody else received it through Moses. I'm just using a couple of examples. In a minute, it'll be clear. Now, let's go to the New Testament. At the time of John the Baptist, if you were alive at the time of John the Baptist on the earth, here is a strange man. He's supposed to be a priest. But he got another vision. So he didn't go to the temple. He knew something no one else knew. He knew that that temple was no longer God's house. And he knew that Jesus was coming. So he went to the wilderness. And he wore not priestly garments. Rough clothes. And he ate locusts. It's not the priest who died. Let me tell you, if you were baptized by John, you are outside of God's move at that time. You agree with me? Yes? Only one person received.
received that vision. And then he spoke it. Some responded, some didn't. Actually, actually, the majority did not respond. Okay, one more. If you lived at the time of Paul, the apostle, Paul received a vision that the other apostles did not receive.
Unless that person is God the Father, don't listen to him. But I believe this will be the last age. Not so well kept in it. So now we need to find out the answer to two questions. First, let me ask you this. Do you want to participate in God's move in this age? Amen. Okay? If you want to, you must find the answer to two questions. The first question is, what is the vision of this age? You have to know. If you don't know, you cannot be in it. And the second question you must answer, who is the minister of this age? Who is the person who received the vision of this age? You is it the Pope? Did he receive the vision of the age? Oh, Oh, Is it some great teacher or author? I'm going to get to or a speaker on TV. I'm only at the guest. He became a whole door in a book. No, it's not. And I can't tell you what you should think. Then, since I have met Yagotron, Yogotron, you need to pray. You need to pray. I mean, you need to pray. Lord, I give myself to you to participate in your move. I give my life for this. Lord, in this age, I want to be in the center of your move. So Lord, give me the vision of the age. And Lord, show me who is the minister of the age. And after you do all of that, Go to the gospel book room and buy a book called The Vision of the Age. Do we have it in Burmese? Yeah. So you've got to get it. So go to the room and Well, I believe, and I am deeply convicted that the minister of this age were the ministry of Watchman Nee and Witness Lee. There is not any doubt in my view. You might think, well, you never read anything else. Oh, you go at the I did. I graduated from a Bible 
Chima, any who carry was in our city. You are blessed. Now, what can you want? Don't give me that. Now, I want to. The vision that we receive, not only does it match the age we live in, uh, but it includes all of the visions that came before it. Think about it. If I am right, and this is the last age, and if the vision of this age includes all the foregoing visions, if that is true, then the vision you receive Acts 2 was the model, but it was only in one city. 
serves the Lord full time. You know what his vision is? He read the Bible. And you know what he got? That's his vision. He writes books. Not just one. Many books. About Every time he speaks, he speaks about tithing. I'm not, I'm not kidding. That's his vision. I don't even have the heart to tell him that tithing isn't in the New Testament. <laughs> Tithing's only in the Old Testament. Oh. The things that people get and consider important, you just can't imagine. There's a lot of people in here. More than 50 million. Out of 54 million? Out of those 54 million people, only you, only you have the vision. I mean, this is a big room, but it's not that big. Yeah, I wish we had 54 million people in this room. Yeah. In front of me, the most important people in the country of Myanmar. For sure. Speak this vision. Amen. You buy a little pill with the weapon. When you go back to your place, speak this vision. So more Burmese people come into God's move in this age. Number three, as long as we have different views. On a minor point, we cannot have the one accord. Is, it, is there a mistake in the outline? Should it, shouldn't it say major point instead of minor point? I mean, we can't even have a different view on a minor point. No. You know why? Because you will make the minor point a major point. You will make tithing the vision of the age. One of the great things about having a clear vision is you know what's important and what's not. Listen, everything in the Bible is important. If it's in the Bible, it's important. That doesn't mean that every point in the Bible is equally important. You know, in Matthew 22, the Lord was talking to the Pharisees. Guess what he was talking to them about? Tithing. He said, 
You're so concerned about tithing. But you have neglected the weightier matters of the law. You have neglected the weightier matters of the law. Oh, and then he told them, yes, you do need to tithe. But don't miss the weightier matters. And you know, the Lord Jesus, he was a good speaker. Listen to the analogy he used. He said, tithing has the weight of a gnat. A G-N-A-T. A tiny, tiny, tiny insect. Uh, the sample of the words are Creed. 
I think some of you already know that one. You know, you can recite the Nicene Creed in a couple of minutes. Oh, the Nicene You know how long it would take us to recite our creed? You need to start at Genesis 1-1 and finish in Revelation 22. Now you have recited our creed. That's why we don't have a creed. But we have the up-to-date vision. Okay. We can be in one accord because we have one all-inclusive vision. The vision that the Lord has given his recovery is an all-inclusive vision, the ultimate consummation of all the visions in the Bible, the New Jerusalem. If you want to say it simply, the geometry, what's the vision we see? You see the vision at the end of the Bible. We see the new Jerusalem. And that consummation of the Bible includes everything before it. I don't know how it is here in Myanmar. You know, in the United States, we have a lot of Christian bookstores, a lot. You go into those bookstores, there's not one book on the New Jerusalem, not one. And you listen to the preachers. They don't even mention the New Jerusalem. It's not in their consciousness, not at all. And the only ones who do mention it say that the New Jerusalem is heaven. Then they ask you a question. Is the New Jerusalem the same thing as heaven? Okay, you need to say no very loudly. <laughs> no, that's heaven? Are you kidding me? That's not our vision. Heaven? That's not the vision of the age. Heaven is not the ultimate consummation of God's work in all of time. I don't even want to go to heaven. I want to become a part of the new Jerusalem. With you. We're not going to the new Jerusalem. We are becoming the Amen. Nobody knows that. Nobody talks about it. 
That's heresy. A new people. You think that man becomes God? Very important. 
When he first touched the recovery, he just could not imagine how the church in Rangoon would be doing the same thing as Sydney, Australia. So one day I was talking to Brother Hay. And I made a little joke. I said, hey, what we did is when you left Rangoon, we called the brothers in Sydney and told them what you heard in Rangoon. Of course we didn't do that. We don't need to do that. All the churches are eating the same food.